Judge Merchan just said it's clear the $1,000 fine is not working. He said going forward, this court will have to consider a jail sentence. He then said, the last thing I want to consider is jail. You are a former president and possibly the next president, uh, end quote. Andy, why don't we just start right there, because he's going to assess the gag order yet again. Uh, sorry, the gag order stays, but he'll assess the fine. So I think you're up to 10, 11, maybe 14 grand. I don't know. I lost count. Andy, go ahead. Bill, as I said to you last week, if I were Trump, I, I'd basically bring in a check for 10 grand every Monday and just say whatever I want. This is all politics at this point. I don't think the judge, I mean, it's easy for me to say because he's not going to put me in custody, but uh, I don't think the judge, because of the politics of this, it would be disastrous politics for the Democrats, for the judge to put former President Trump in jail over this. So he'll continue to fine him. And as long as that's what it is, I think Trump should just pay the fine and otherwise say what he wants to say. Trump is running rings around this corrupt Manhattan prosecution. All is their case against number 45, soon to be number 47, implodes. Hey, gang, it's me, Dr. Steve, your patron professor, here to help you stay sane in these insane times. So make sure to smack that bell and subscribe button. Also, gang, have you seen the price of gold lately? I, I've been telling you, there's never been a better time to tap into the timeless value of gold and silver than right now. Central banks all over the world are buying up gold left and right. This is why the price of gold is expected to continue to climb. And it's also why we have as one of our wonderful partners on this channel, the amazing company Gold Co. Because they're patriots just like us who want to help you and guide you in how to get into precious metals completely tax-free and penalty free. They're really amazing. And I could not recommend a company more. In fact, if you click on that link below right now, you can get your very own absolutely free gold and silver kit. It's an amazing free resource that shows you step by step how to get into precious metals. Even if your money's still in a retirement account, like an IRA or a 401k. And just to show you how awesome the Patriots of Gold Co. are, the best part is you may actually already qualify to get up to $10,000 in free silver. I told you the best, so what are you waiting for? Get in on the action by clicking on that link below or going to turleytalkslikesgold.com and get your free gold and silver kit today. It promises to be a real life changer. As the sham hush money trial enters its third week, the judge in the case, uh, Judge Merchant, a Democrat, a very loyal Democrat who's a vested interest in trying to take down Trump, began the week threatening to send President Trump to jail. He accused Trump of continuously violating the unconstitutional gag order that he imposed on him, and that if Trump didn't stop those flagrant violations, this judge would have to consider sending Trump to jail in contempt of court. And to make matters even worse, this judge even admitted <laughs> that Trump will most likely become the next president. I mean, you can't make this stuff up. He literally said to him, you know, it would be really sad and unfortunate if I had to lock you up, given that you were once president of the United States and, in fact, may be the next one. <laughs> this guy is hopeless. Trump's response to that threat, by the way, was epic. He said that our Constitution is much more important to him than jail. It's not even close. He said, I'll do that sacrifice any day. So, obviously, he's not even remotely intimidated by this joke of a judge's threats. And as you heard earlier from the legal analyst Andrew McCarthy at the beginning of this video, Trump is absolutely right not to be intimidated. Look, the Dems have lost the plot on this, and I think they know it, at least the more honest ones. They know Trump is running rings around them politically in this farcical trial that shouldn't even be happening in the first place, since the statutes of limitations ran out years ago. Again, we don't even know what the crime was that was supposedly committed by Trump. What, in fact, did Trump do? And that's the key. Do that was illegal. Alvin Bragg is accusing him of supposedly falsifying, falsifying bank records in order to cover up another crime. That's how they turned this misdemeanor into a felony. And that other crime is supposedly Trump tried to hide Stormy Daniels' affair from his campaign. But there's nothing that even remotely suggests that that's what he did. And again, even if he did that, it's not a crime if he did it for other reasons, like wanting to hide it from Melania. That's not a crime. 
Now, Hope Hicks took the stand the other day. Hope Hicks is the longtime campaign PR person representative of Trump. And the legacy media is just so utterly shameless here because at one point, as the prosecution began to grill her, Hope started to cry. Now, we don't know why. It was never discussed in court. And they had to take a recess so she could regain her composure. But the way the legacy media framed that was if her testimony was so devastating to Trump. I mean, you could just tell she was breaking down over the overwhelming guilt. When in point of fact, her testimony actually ended up destroying, and I mean destroying, Bragg's case. She said that she does recall Trump acknowledging some knowledge of Michael Cohen paying the $130,000 to Stormy Daniels, which of course doesn't even matter if Trump did know about it. Doesn't matter. Again, the payment itself is not illegal. Hush money payments are not illegal. But regardless, Hope Hicks came out and said exactly what in the end crushes Bragg's case. Ultimately, according to her, Trump was worried about all these women coming out and alleging affairs, not because it would affect the campaign, but because of Melania. He was worried about how it would affect Melania. Again, a lot of people don't realize Trump and Melania have been married for 20 years. Of course, he's going to be concerned about all these women coming out and making these allegations going decades back. But in the end, and here is the devastating point for Bragg, none of this at all matters, legally speaking. It's completely irrelevant what was going on in Trump's head. I mean, the media can't stop talking about it, but legally, it is totally and completely irrelevant. All that matters is the nature of the payment. Make sure you got that, okay? Megan Kelly, who's a lawyer, uh, she was talking about this with Victor Davis Hanson the other day. She made a very good point. All that matters is the objective nature of the payment. Was that payment, again, not even made by Trump, made by Michael Cohen, a serial liar, can it be shown that that payment can only ever be a campaign expense, like paying a pollster, right, or a campaign advisor? Can it be shown that that payment can only ever be a campaign expense or... Are there objectively other possible reasons for the payment? Did the payment serve multiple purposes? And objectively speaking, whether the New York Times or MSNBC or CNN like it or not, this payment falls in the latter category, which thereby precludes the payment from being a campaign finance violation. And Hope Hicks' testimony clearly evidences that as far as Trump was concerned, that payment was ultimately about something other than a campaign, namely Melania. But even if she didn't say that, there's no reason on earth to believe that such a payment was made only as a campaign expense. It does not fall under any category that is specific only to campaigns. Now, as of the making of this video, Stormy Daniels is testifying right now. She just uh, took the stand. And you have to wonder, given that she's changed her story over and over again, you have to wonder which story she's going to go with today. I'm assuming today we'll find out if that letter she purportedly wrote denying an affair with Trump uh, is authentic. But regardless, again, I have to reiterate here again. Remember, my job is to keep you sane in these insane times, right? I'm your patriot professor. I must reiterate, nothing Stormy Daniels says matters here. I mean, literally nothing there. There, This is just a circus sideshow at this point. There is nothing that she could possibly say that would in any way change the fact that a hundred and thirty thousand dollar hush money payment does not necessarily fall under the category of a campaign expense. That is the absurd charge that the prosecution is trying to prove. There is no reality that you could fabricate where a hundred thirty thousand dollar hush payment by necessity, constitutes a campaign expense. The only reason why Stormy Daniels is up there right now testifying is so that the prosecution and the media can together spin this salaciously, this salacious uh, frame to try to persuade the jury to think that this payment is only a campaign expense, which no people on earth would normally do. Whether it works or not, we'll have to see. But it's beyond embarrassing in terms of the actual objective nature of the charge. So we'll continue to monitor the trial each day and see if we can discern any patterns here. But the only pattern I see thus far is just how farcical this whole thing really is.
Also, as you know, we've just unveiled our brand new Turley Talks app. This is our answer to YouTube's demonetizing our channel. It's a beautiful cancel-proof app that you can download completely free just by clicking on that link below or by going to Fight. .turleytalks.com. This app is our way to declare our independence from all woke platforms that hate us and to tell the international woke police precisely where they could stick it. You're going to love it. Click on that link below or go to fight.turleytalks.com right now.